This is lesson four in Daisy Knot's How to Draw with Your Sewing Machine. Welcome and let's get started. In this lesson we're going to use the same owl that we used in lesson three but we are going to make a 3D version of them. Materials required are two different types of fabric which are making our owl out of. A piece of white fabric for his eyes, a cream or white a coloured fabric for the centre and a coloured piece of fabric or patterned for the back. Both of these pieces of fabric need to fit a 20 centimetre hoop. We need some cord for the hanger and for the feet. I'm using a wax cotton cord and a very small amount of polyester stuffing for the centre. You need a template to draw around. I'm going to use the owl that we used in lesson three. I suggest you create your own template. Lay out the shapes on the fabric that you want to cut them out of. In this case, the wings and the outer eyes are going to be yellow and the inner eyes white and the body is going to be on the gray. I'm going to use an air erasable pen to draw around our shapes before cutting them out. I drew around the uh, shapes on the reverse of my fabric so when I cut them out they didn't show on the right side. Cut the shapes out carefully. Get the cream or white fabric and hoop it up using the larger outside hoop at the bottom and the smaller hoop into the centre. Place your shapes into the centre of the hoop with all the layers going into their correct positions. Make sure the sewing machine is set up, the feed dogs down are covered and the embroidery foot attached. Because our design is a 3D shape, we don't attach the main layer, in this case our body of our owl first, we attach the wings, the layered part of the fabric. Sew so very carefully and slowly around the outsides of both wings. Sew so around them twice to give us a nice outline. Snip off all um, the threads so we have a nice clean surface. Position the next layer in place to make sure that you're happy where it's going to go. Again, Slowly sew around the outside. Again, we're going to be doing this twice. And then, as before, snip off all our spare ends. I'm putting the next layer of my owl into position and sewing it, which is his beak. And once his beak is done, I'm ready to do the inner eyes. Take a few moments to actually place these in the correct position because it can make a big difference to what the expression of the owl looks like. Now all the layers have been sewn into place, we need to go to the back. Oh, um, we see that I've made a slight mistake. I've caught a piece of the fabric when I was sewing. This is a very common mistake to make, so you'd be very careful when you are actually um, sewing. In this case, I can actually snip it off. It's not a massive problem because it wasn't a big piece of fabric. Um, but if you've got a larger piece of fabric than that, you might have to unpick some of it. And unpicking free motion embroidery isn't the easiest of tasks to actually do. You can see that I'm actually clipping off all the spare threads from the back here too. They always got to be trimmed to be the same size as the white fabric. I do this in two stages. I cut just a bit of the a white fabric off so that it's a larger piece than the owl and then I am trimming it very closely, slightly smaller than the main fabric. And you've got to be really careful that you don't touch any of the main fabric to it. As the curve of the owl's head was slightly harder to cut. I used the air erasable pen and then followed the line. That was a lot easier. 
what I'm doing here is just checking to make sure that there's no white fabric showing on the outside of the owl. I don't want to see any. Now we've got the front of the owl all finished, we need to hoop up the backing fabric and place the owl in the centre where we're going to be doing all the sewing and attaching. Cut 40 centimetres of cord, fold it in half and then put it roughly 2 centimetres down in the centre of where you want the hang to be. Sew very carefully along the top and when you come to the centre where the cords are, pull the cords together so you actually have them sitting fairly close together. You don't want them splayed apart. I'm going to sew down over the wing to the edge of the wing, to the bottom point, because that is where I'm going to attach my feet. You need a 30 centimetre piece of cord for each foot, so you'll need two 30 centimetre pieces of cord. You fold one of these pieces of cord in half and then in half again, which gives you four strands, which is what we require to make the feet. Put the folded ends into between the front and the back and make sure again that all four strands are pushed very closely together. Carefully sew over these four strands of cords, trying to keep them as close as you can together. We want to insert the next foot in the same position, just at the side of the wing. So again, we position the folded pieces underneath the front, between the back, and we slowly sew across these strands, keeping them together as we did with the other side. Once you've sewn across the um, strands of cord and just slightly onto the wing, we're now ready to put in our stuffing. We use only a very, very small piece of stuffing to actually stuff the owl, hardly any at all. You can see I used a very small piece of stuffing and I'm teasing it into position with the end of a crochet hook. Um, again, I pat it into position and I, a tiny little bit extra, teased into position, pat, patted into position and then I'm ready, once I'm happy with the padding of it, to finish sewing up the edge of the owl. Once we've gone round the owl once, we need to go round it a second time. Again, so it looks as though I'm going very quick here, I actually went pretty slow going round it, so just take your time and go round it nice and gently. Trim the threads, take the hoop out from under the machine and trim the back threads too. Again, we've got to cut the owl out from the backing fabric, the same as we did with the centre fabric, the white fabric. Got to be careful this time that we don't cut off the hangers and the feet, so again it's going to be a two-step process to cut the owl out. Cut around the backing fabric, leaving a generous amount of the pattern fabric still in place. Then as you did before, very carefully cut around the owl, making sure you hold the cord out of the way this time so that you don't chop it off. Tie an overhand knot in the hanger roughly 10 to 15 centimetres above the owl. Then cut the excess cord roughly down to one and a half to two centimetres. This um, step is a personal preference. I decided I wanted three claws, not four, so I cut off one of the pieces of cord on either side, and then I decided that I wanted the little claws to be a little bit shorter, so I cut them a little bit too. So we have nice short claws. The last thing to do is to cut the hanger from where the overhand knot is, I cut it to roughly one to one and a half centimetres. And there we have our cute little Gilbert Owl all finished. Gilbert Owls joined his gangly friends, gangly bird, gangly bunny and gangly chicken. I hope you've enjoyed this video. The other videos in this series can be found on either the Daisy Knots blog 
or the YouTube channel and the patterns for all the creatures can be found at Daisy Knots website in the shop.